today. Gonna get it done today. Yes, sir. desire and execution first and ten play fake Clark for time he's got a receiver touchdown Penn State the Nittany Lions go 81 yards and they answer again All the way up to the far corner block from Waller. Touchdown, Penn State. The Nittany Lions take the lead. Throws over the middle, intercepted by Anthony Scarano at the 48 yard line of Illinois. Illinois and Penn State fought for every inch of Beaver Stadium turf, each searching for the signature play that would make the difference. Line drive toward the corner. It's going to foul stay in the field of play. Williams picks it up at the 6 to the 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Williams to the 40, to the 50. There goes Derek Williams in the high gear at the 30, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Derek Williams. His third touchdown of the night. One receiving, one rushing, and now an electrifying 94-yard kickoff return. And the Nittany Lions are back up by two scores. Williams' return left one of the largest crowds ever at Penn State singing in the rain. The wave they created carried the hopeful Nittany Lions to victory. This is where it all started. This is Boney Rogers Field. This is where the, the little, all little league teams from all over Youngstown played. I can hear the whistles blowing, the people cheering and stuff like that. And we won a lot of games and a lot of championships under him too. So there you have it, man. Youngstown, growing up here, man, it was fun at times, scary moments at times. And I was lucky to be blessed with two great parents. You know, they taught us right from wrong. They made living here, you know, a, a great experience. You take something that, you know, that can be dangerous, uh, can be bad at times, and make the best out of it. My mom is a beautician, and she's a correctional officer. Uh, my dad is a press operator. He's always been the outspoken one. I guess you would call it a hyper one. I always got in trouble. Very feisty. He was always active, always into something, always the one that was going to get hollered at at least three, four times a day. Hey, Daryl Clark! When he was a little boy, he was bad. <laughs> was able to overcome all of that as he grew older. I guess he was always going to make you know that he was there. We played cops and robbers. We always rode our bikes. Did a lot of video games and, you know. We used to play that a lot. I mean, from Nintendo up. If I didn't have any football practice, it was three, four, five of my friends playing a game. Play football, basketball, baseball. He used to wrestle with his brothers and until his older brother would, of course, uh, then he would scream for help. Man. Can you still take him? Uh, uh, I tried the other day. I don't know if I was successful, but, you know, he's a little bigger than he used to be. <laughs> he just loved the game of football. He used to sleep with the football. And I've been playing quarterback all my life, actually. He used to be my quarterback for my team. And he was the reason why, how I discovered that I can throw the football. One day we were out in the backyard, and uh, he just wanted me to throw the ball one time, you know? And I threw it, and I ended up throwing it pretty far, pretty hard. And, uh, you know, that stuck ever since. He was real hard on me growing up. 
But as you get older, you understand that he, he wants to bring the best out of you. From then on, it's what we got now. Rolls near side, looks directly trying to make 30. 25, 20, 15 and out of bounds. Daryl Clark's first one of the season. That's what we know him for from back when he was seven, eight years old. That's how you throw that ball. The first time that I saw him when he uh, was playing football, I'm going, boy, he, he's got to be a tough kid. Everybody on his team, they all came around. Always came around him. It was like, Dude, we got to do this. We got to do this. You don't go, we don't go. And his dad told him, call, call your own play. Call your own play. So he called his own play. And I don't know if we scored or what, what we, we picked up the first down. But everybody was like, he called that? You know? And it's just the fact that being seven, eight years old, you know, you can see that he, that, that he, that he was mature. And there was one game in particular, I remember. We were walking off the field. He, had to, he had a, actually had a real good game. And he said, Dad, I just want to tell you. I said, what do you what do you want? He said, I'm going pro. I said, is that right? Do what you got to do. As the years went on, he got better and better. We could just sit here all day about high school, man. It's just plays, plays how he threw the ball and ran. And yeah, I feel that it's, it's the best football in the state of Ohio. We won a state championship. Couldn't get enough of the game. He always wanted more. There were times where it almost was to the point where we had to say, hey, Daryl, you know, you need to take a break. If I used to worry about him, I thought he was going to burn himself out. I really did because he was like, he even spent a lot of time at home doing the things that, you know, we normal kids do because he was stuck in that gym all the time. Those guys working, you know, day in and day out and coming home. My mom ended up still about making dinner for us and everything like that. That type of energy and that type of work ethic rubbed off on me. He's paid the price to be where he wants to be, and I think he's just the perfect gentleman now. You know, probably the best day of my life was when I was working real hard at prep school to try and get the test score, and I finally got it. And once they, once they, once they had read on the internet that I had got the score that I needed, I called Jay Paterno immediately and let him know that, hey, I'm ready now. He was a total team player, and, and work ethic is better than anyone that season. What Penn State has done for him, they gave him the chance. You know, what's he gonna do for Penn State? I think he's worked his tail off. Penn State was the school that stuck with me the most because once schools found out about how my grades were, you know, they shied away from me. You know, we can't take a chance. Penn State did. I think about what a long, hard way he has come to get to where he is, you know, and I'm just so proud of him. He wasn't your typical kid who came right out of high school. One of the biggest reasons why I love it here the most is because of what those coaches did, Coach Jay and Coach Joe. They stuck with me. They were very, very loyal. I know he was really impressed in, with Joe Paul. I love Joe Paterno. I've, I mean, even before Daryl got there, I always liked him as a coach. And he talked to me, and we talked on the phone, I guess maybe 25 or 30 minutes or so. And I never forget that. I'm just excited that, you know, I have a chance to lead this offense this year to something great. You know, I'm very confident in our offense. I think you're going to see, here's a kid who's ready to show you something, who's earned his stripes. I feel like we have something special this year. Watch out for us, man. So stay tuned, fellas. It's going down. It's going down. Love when they do the wide out here. This is my favorite student section in the country. General admission seating. They show up two hours before the game. In fact, they show up Tuesday at Paternoville with the tents. And then they open up the gates a couple hours before kick. And they fill it in. <laughs> And they support the Lions so well. Man, they are they are the best. Yeah, I think we're making good progress. I, I don't I don't want to go overboard, but I think we're we're getting close to being a a, a really good football team.